welcome to a new video and a new camera comparison. This time around we want to compare a mid-ranger from 2022 against yeah, a flagship from a few years ago, the iPhone XS. So who is the winner here in this camera comparison, the 10 Mark IV or the iPhone XS? Let's get started. So the camera specs first, we have one sensor more on the Xperia's uh, back. So we have two 8 megapixel sensors, one for ultra wide and one for two times telezoom. And we also have a 12 megapixel main sensor. On the iPhone on the other side, we have 12 megapixel main and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. And then we have also something on the front, which is like seven and eight megapixel sensors. I don't expect much of them, but we will check them out as well. And I think we will start with the front facing video. So here we have the front-facing camera of the iPhone. It's I think a 7 megapixel sensor so we can only record 1080p 30 and 60. I'm recording in 30 because it has usually the better stabilization. How good is the quality here? I'm looking directly into the sun so let's turn around and let's see how it is handling HDR effects. Is my face still exposed? I think it's a bit dark here and uh, stabilization. How is stabilization doing? Let's go up a little bit the hill here to see how this is coping up with stabilization. On the viewfinder itself it looks a bit shaky but uh, how's the footage? What do you think? And now the same footage on the Xperia 10 Mark IV, looking into the sun right now. How stabilization, how are colors here, also 1080p 30 frames per second. It cannot record 60 frames per second. And what if I turn against the sun, is HDR kicking in and illuminating my face? I think it is doing something here, at least my face looks suddenly a bit brighter. So now recording with the iPhone XS, 4K 30 frames per second, something that this Xperia device cannot do. Is a mid-ranger just only. How is auto-focusing? I think it is, should be working fine. And uh, yeah, what I did a mistake, I think in the beginning is that I thought that this has an ultra-wide angle. Actually, this one has only a 12 megapixel zoom lens, which has a slightly bit of, uh, bigger sensor than the Xperia for zooming in. So let's try it out, two times zoom lens only. So here we have some uh, boats passing by, see HDR is working nicely, two times zoom is like this. can go digitally up to six times, this looks like this, stabilization is good. But I think the details are not there yet. So what do you think about the colors, about HDR and everything on the 10? And now I'm recording with the Xperia 10 Mark IV uh, main camera, 1080p, 30 frames per second. You can get up to 60 frames per second, but I'm working on a 30 timeline. So this is what you get in terms of stability and quality. What I can do here is I can go to the ultra wide angle and I can go to the tailor if I like to. So I can go in here and have a two times teller as well. You can see HDR is also kicking in, but it doesn't look as fine as on the 10s, I would say. But stabilization is pretty fine. I can also zoom in even further if I want to, up to 10 times. But I think the quality here is just simply worse. Even if stabilization is good, it's not the best quality. But what I can do is I can go to the ultra wide angle. Now I have the ultra wide angle here and this is the quality that you can get on the ultra wide angle, especially useful for vlogging I would say. Something that the iPhone XS misses completely and only has the zoom lens and uh, yeah, Apple corrected this mistake with the iPhone 11. So here are the photos, the iPhone XS always on the left and the Xperia 10 Mark IV always on the right. And call me surprised, but I think at the end you will be a little bit surprised that the iPhone is not the clear winner. First of all, what we can see here, taking a shot with the main lens, that we have much more warmer kind of tone on the iPhone XS and much cooler kind of tone on the Xperia 10 Mark IV. When we zoom in, what we can see here already is, even if I took it slightly at a different angle here, is that we see much more noise and less details on the 10s, especially in the background, just like let's go to this church and uh, the other buildings there. You can directly see it on the Xperia 10 Mark IV that they are distinguished that they are various different buildings. You cannot do this on the iPhone 10s, and this has like some kind of like layer that is a bit of yellow greenish that uh, yeah, is not looking pleasant. That you can see here also already like noise creeping in and you see some, some smudging going on. And overall as well here where the riverbank is and all those little flowers or little bushes are growing, everything is nice and sharp where the tennis has a bit unsharp. When we come to the zoom lens, we can see that we have a bit of a shift in terms of colors on the 10 Mark IV because I think that the zoom lens has the, one of the worst um, dynamic ranges on the 10 Mark IV. 
So you can see better dynamic range on the 10 S with the two times zoom against the 10 Mark IV. What we have here when I zoom in is that pretty comparable in terms of uh, details. A bit of brighter because I think the better HDR is kicking in, also brightening up the shadows here in the background. But you can see also much more noise on the uh, 10S where the Xperia tends to denoise stuff and has in general less noise. And let me just go in here and uh, checking what's what's going on in the background. We can see, yeah, much more noise going on, much lifted shadows on the 10S and a bit more denoising algorithms on the 10 Mark IV. Then we have some closer zoom ups. I have like a, what was it? I think 10 times zoom that I could go with the 10S. And uh, this is a five times zoom on the Xperia 5 Mark for to tell you that the five times zoom is still looking pretty, pretty good. And you can see like it is uh, not looking like an optical zoom, but it's very, very close to it. So up to five times, I would say the 10 Mark IV is still keeping up pretty good. And when it comes to the uh, 10 times zoom that we can see here, very comparable to the iPhone. And here, somehow it shifts, like the iPhone has a bit more cooler kind of color and the Xperia 10 Mark IV a bit more yellowish kind of color. When I zoom in, you can see as well, the iPhone retains a bit more details, but has more noise. And the Xperia 10 Mark IV is uh, denoising a lot, has denoising algorithms, so smudging everything out a little bit, everything softened up a little bit. And uh, yeah, you have it a bit smoother, especially here on the ramp, for example, you can see it pretty, pretty closely that there's a bit more detail where, you, for example, those vents here, you don't see them here on the Xperia at all. So this is this. Then uh, the Xperia 10 Mark IV also has an ultra wide angle. This is one of the big advantages that you don't have on the 10S. So the 10S you cannot take a photo like this. Has the ultra wide angle has very good HDR as well, um, on par with the main lens, which I really, really like. But the sharpness is not there. You can see here it's very very soft and um, also noisy and denoising algorithms are creeping in. Uh, to denoise uh, everything, so everything is a bit soft here on the ultra wide angle, even though it has a good um, kind of HDR. Then another HDR shot against the sun, a little close up shot. We can see here again a bit of a layer of some kind of yellowish tint going on on the iPhone XS and a bit more bluer on the 10 Mark IV. And when we take a look closer, you can see that the detail level here on the on both is, is pretty amazing, where it tends to be that the 10 Mark IV, I think might, might be have a bigger aperture, at least it has some parts in focus and you can see the leaf in the background is not so much in focus, where on the iPhone, the leaf in the background is also in focus. So the depth of field is clearer there. You can see here as well, those are not in focus and those in the front are in focus where the iPhone uh, simply doesn't have them in focus. I, I don't know what's going on here. Maybe the sunshine is creating some kind of lens flare effect. You also see it on the 10 Mark IV, but it's not like uh, giving us a softer image. Uh, in general, it might be also that there's a softer image on the 10S device. Uh, Ultra wide angle against normal cam. You can see again that the ultra wide angle can be very handy to photograph more stuff. As you can see here, we only have one building of the two buildings on the right, and we have like a little bit here of the building on the left. So this is a big difference. Another big difference is white balance. You can see a lot more yellow on the iPhone XS and a lot more cooled down on the Xperia 10 Mark IV with the ultra wide angle. When it comes to detail level, not so good. But when you compare them, Side by side, you can see, okay, clearly the 10 Mark IV's detail is a bit worse than the iPhone XS, but it's not so far apart. And this is an ultra wide angle on the 10 Mark IV, and it's the main on the 10S. And when I go to the main sensor, by the way, very nicely also calibrated the ultra wide angle and the main sensor have almost the same colors as you can see here on the 10 IV. And as well, when I zoom in now on the main 10 Mark IV, 12 megapixels, same 12 megapixels as the iPhone XS, you can see if I just zoom in here, it's a night and day difference in terms of sharpness and clarity and details. It's like very interesting to see that the 10 Mark IV offers with the same 12 megapixels much more details. Granted, it's a bit maybe too cool and too punchy blue, the color, but the details are so much there. Just just look at the shades here. This is the shading system here, the, the how much more detail you can see there. In the window, everything much more detailed. Just look at the, the, the roof here on the side. It's softened up so much on the 10S already, where you can clearly see stuff. You can clearly see here that there's something written on the car, which is like here almost yeah, completely gone. 
so much more. Of course, there's a bit of sharpening going on on the 10 Mark IV, and even to the extreme edges where it's getting a bit soft on the 10 Mark IV, it's no comparison to the iPhone XS. The 10 Mark IV is beating the iPhone XS in main camera for photos for sure. Better optics, more sharpness, um, better white balance, I would say. In overall, in photos, it's just simple, simply better. And you can see it even in close-ups. Again, much more warmer, more brightened up because more HDR and lifted shadows on the 10s kind of colors. But if I zoom in here, okay, it looks nice. The bokeh looks very, very busy. And if you compare it to the 10 Mark IV, uh, white balance a bit better. You can distinguish the, the yellow kind of uh, bit of color dots on the flower that you cannot see so much because almost everything is yellow on the 10s and the bokeh is much much more pleasant and uh, this is why i think there might be something like a bigger aperture on the 10 mark 4 uh, so in general I, I like the 10 mark 4 a lot better and then uh, the the ace about sleeve is the zoom lens on the 10 mark 4 granted it has a little bit you can see here a little bit this is like uh, cooled and this is a lot warmer a lot closer to what the iphone has uh, here to offer so the zoom lens on the 10s is uh, on the on the 10 mark 4 is a lot warmer and sadly not as good calibrated as the rest of the system but what it produces is pretty fantastic as you can see here this shot it even managed to cap like a fly flying here on top of the flowers where it's very unsharp very undetailed on the iphone 10s zoom lens and this bokeh what is going on here with this squirrely mess in the background but this is super super smooth and it's like you can see here everything nice and sharp it just looks so much better than the iphone shot where here the iphone shot has already this unsharp where this is sharp still uh, but it's like i don't know what's going on with the iphone it's like looking very very bad and the 10 mark 4 zoom lens a lot lot better then when it comes to shots of moving subjects the iphone is pretty fast with its shutter speed and i could get very very close when i was a little bit further away the iphone did not manage to get the flower sharp it's a very very small flower as you can see on the 10 mark 4 on the 10 mark 4 the opposite i had like a little bit of shutter delay shutter lag yes that xperia 10 series is still suffering from shutter delay not by far not so bad as on the uh, on the previous uh, generations but it is still there and it's making my life a bit harder to get this flower in shot at least when i get a bit closer especially as it's moving very very uh, fast out of the uh, range of my uh, photo so what i did is I turned on object tracking which is another ace up the xperia 10 mark 4 sleeve because with object tracking i have to step back a bit but i can click on this object that i want to track and as soon as it has the object it's showing a little box i can hit the shutter button or you can even hold the volume key down to make a burst shot and you get it in focus in this case i did not even take the burst shot just used object tracking and then hit the shutter button and it managed to get the shot and nice in focus so let's compare it so we can see the iphone even though it has this weird background bokeh um, which i really don't like it's very busy managed to cap so much detail here we can see the little balls of this flowers it's like a very tiny flower you cannot see it with your own eyes and the camera is taking this very nicely here and uh, yeah now to the xperia 10 mark 4 you can see the 10 mark 4 because it's a bit further away yes uh, not so much details eventually the, the bokeh is also not the best a bit busy it's not so warm the exposure but the detail level is almost on par let me zoom in like to roughly the same distance you can see yeah it's still a bit closer up and a bit of a different uh, kind of, of, of view here but the details are still there so it's also pretty pretty good and pretty awesome for close-up shots even though yeah for moving subjects moving things activate the object tracking on the 10 mark 4 then when it comes to selfie shots here again the the 10s is shining because i think it uh, does a terrific job and the xperia 10 mark 4 yeah it's doing also a good job with its 8 megapixel sensor uh, but uh, yeah the hdr is a bit better on the iphone 10s and i think the detail level is a bit better look at my face here and the details on the face and look how much smoothened out it looks on the xperia 10 mark 4 maybe a bit slightly blown out as well but you can see like a little bit more pores on my on my skin where it's smoothening out on the 10 mark 4 probably 10 mark 4 is doing some kind of computational photography for doing this uh, which the iphone doesn't do here for smoothening things up 
but yeah, it looks a bit more pleasant on the iPhone XS, even though I look a bit too yellow, too, too reddish kind of. And uh, the Xperia 10 Mark 4 has my skin color better. And I think my hair color also is a lot too yellow to, to yeah, lift it up shadows on the 10S, but the 10 Mark 4 is doing a better job bokeh. I think the 10 Mark 4 is doing a bit more bokeh here. But when it comes to sharpness, look at my hand here and compare it with the iPhone XS. The iPhone XS has more details here, definitely. And the 10 Mark 4 is like smoothing everything out a little bit, so lost of detail. So I think in terms of selfies, the 10S has an edge. Let's come to the night modes or darker conditions. And here we can see in a dim lit situation, we have a bit more noise creeping in on the 10 Mark 4. Here you can see the difference in terms of sensor size, where the iPhone XS has a bit of Yes, a bigger sensor and uh, it's a bit more noisy on the 10 Mark 4 and here you can see the difference uh, and you can see the noise is handled much nicer on the 10s in this comparison but the 10 Mark 4 also has an ace up its sleeve because it can use night mode and if I go to night mode first of all what you can see it's a brighter image and I think in terms of clarity it could also work a little bit but you can see that the iPhone is holding very good and has everything nice and sharp where the 10 Mark 4 despite having OIS it's uh, struggling a little bit here uh, with getting everything nice and sharp so this is a uh, win for the iPhone in terms of night mode. Here we have another shot where the iPhone even missed completely. The uh, Xperia 10 Mark 4 also missed completely. You can see uh, in super low light conditions, even with the night mode turned on on Xperia, you don't have any chance to capture something. Here another photo again, we have a much more kind of yellowish kind of look. The wall is white and not yellow. And when we go in here, you can see noise creeping in. There's a bit of noise as well on the 10 Mark 4, but it's much more nicer controlled and much less uh, than on the 10S. You can see all the noise here in this picture where here it's a bit smudged out for sure, but there's not so much noise going on. So yeah, in dim lit situations, I think they are very, very neck to neck. And I think the iPhone has sometimes the edge, but not always, especially because of the white balance being so off. When it comes to a bit more light, then the iPhone and the 10 Mark 4 do a little bit better. So uh, sun setting and you still have a little bit of uh, like uh, bright sky. You can see a little bit more of details here. Uh, again, this kind of yellowish kind of the feeling that you don't have on the 10 Mark 4. So what do you think about this? I'm very surprised. I don't like the 10S so much because the colors are much too yellow. The 10 Mark 4, not only with its flexibility, but also with its main and zoom lens are beating the iPhone 10S in photography. Which one is the clear winner? The iPhone 10S or the 10 Mark 4? I think the iPhone 10S, as a prior or still flagship phone, it still has the better HDR. But this 10 Mark IV has a bit of more flexibility with its zoom and ultra wide angle, even though the ultra wide angle is nothing to write home about. I think it has an edge there. In terms of video, the iPhone has a more filmic kind of look. The 10 Mark IV, a bit over sharpened here and there, but I like the new HDR on the 10 Mark IV that they added, which makes a lot of sense with the update. And yeah, who's or which one is the clear winner for you? Write it down in the comment section. That's everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.